Hi guys and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes, who is of course War Machine, or in the film, pretty much an Iron Patriot. Uh, and that comes from the Marvel Legends Iron Man 3 line. Um, so, first of all, on the box it does say Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes, which I do quite like because he's not the actual Iron Patriot, because that's Norman Osborn. Um, I guess I would have liked it to have said War Machine, um, but to separate it from its other War Machine figures, they've gone with um, Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes, which is perfectly fine for me, I guess, really. Um, on the back, here we have a picture of him in, in his uh, conventional War Machine colours, which I think is pretty damn nice. Uh, and then we have this picture of him here, which Yes, that's what you can do. It is wrong because the hands on here, as you can see, are black. If I just focus in on them there. As you can see, the hands are black. Uh, they're red on the figure. Apart from that, it seems nice, except that looks like more of a matte finish. The figure is actually really metallic and looks a lot better uh, than here. And that is also wrong as well. Um, you can't do that, and that is really annoying, and I'll get to that later on. As it says on the packaging, it comes with the left arm for Ironmonger. So let's take a quick look at that now. I'll just put that on the back. So left arm is right here. It's got pretty decent articulation in the joint. And the uh, the hand's really nice. You've got a nice sort of ribbed classic texture in there, which I do really like. But to get a proper look at this, when I do complete Ironmonger, I'll get a separate review up for that. So if you go ahead and click the subscribe button up here, you'll be informed as soon as I get that video up. Now one thing I don't like current Marvel packages and I said that in the last two videos if you want to take a look at them um, there's no bio here. This image you can clearly see in the front here so you don't need another image of the figure directly so they could have easily put a bio there and there's enough blank space around if they just move this up a little bit they could have easily put a little bio here as to who the character is or maybe um, uh, what his role is in the film or something, I don't know. But let's take a look at the figure. So here he is then, Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes as War Machine slash Iron Patriot. So first of all, you're noticing that it's got very, very nice metallic paint. It's pretty decent on here. Uh, I've got no problems whatsoever with paint, apart from just here, if I just zoom in on that properly, you can see the silver, there's just a tiny little silver dot there. Not much of a problem. It's on the back for a start, but also, it's, you know, it, as he gets battle damage and stuff, it would be more silver showing up. So at least it's not a splatter of blue on the red there or something. I'm fine with it being silver. Other than that, as you can see, as I said earlier, red hands, not black hands. And he doesn't have the painted repulsors, which I find really strange. A figure like this, where they have actually used that colour in the eyes and the and the uh, arc reactor on the chest, and of how well detailed he is and well painted, that they couldn't do that on the hand. It's a bit strange. So this is how I have him on the shelf. You can see you can get him in a pretty decent uh, repulsifying pose and uh, have that following it. Um, paint detail on the lettering, as you can see there, you've got. I mean, I don't know if it was the same as on other War Machine figures and stuff, um, but it is movie accurate, at least. And you've got Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes on the chest, which I like. Uh, Close-up of the face. I really do like this helmet in general, the design and everything. And they have captured that. It is a completely new mould, so it's the longer version there, so very nice. Uh, Accessories-wise, Obviously, he comes with his shoulder-mounted weapon, which, as you can see, you have a peg on both sides of his shoulder. And to be movie accurate, it has to be on this side, so you just peg it in. And problems occur immediately. You can see where it is. Uh, yeah, that didn't happen in the movie. It should not be behind his head there. It should be... Uh, there-ish, but lower, and you clearly cannot get it to what it is like on the picture, because the only way you can get it to look good 
and to be in the right place is to have it on that shoulder right there but problem is it's on the wrong shoulder that's because all of this is solid if this actually was a joint and it wasn't just moulded on you could put that there and rotate it and bring it to the other side and it would be perfect and that would be on a ball joint there and then you could turn that that way and it would be perfect but as it is I like it because that's the shoulder that the gun's meant to be on if you're going for like a classic sort of look uh, and then you'd have the missile pods here and it is good that you can take other stuff from older War Machine figures and stuff and you can peg them in there and you can do that so you can customise your own sort of look there or vice versa you can use these on your old ones but really to be movie accurate it has to be on this shoulder and I don't like that uh, articulation wise head very nice ball joint up and down you get a little bit of side to side and then left right is very good so pretty good articulation for a head of that size as well uh, as you can see it's sort of forward and back a little bit but not too much um, shoulders are really very very nice I do really like the shoulders on this as you can see the flaps they're just on like a little flap of plastic in there like a rubbery plastic they're a rubbery material so they can come up for the arms I really do like um, the new sort of articulation on Iron Man sort of figures um, sort of ratcheted up and down very far ratcheted all the way around you got a rotation at the bicep double jointed arms at the uh, the elbow wrists are pretty good too because they have a, uh, a sort of swivel so they can come in quite far so we can be like damn you meddling kids uh, and then they rotate as well uh, straighten that back out and lift them up out of the way ab crunch on this figure not very impressive not too much but it's fine because he's wearing a big chunk of armor there so I mean you can go back far for flying poses but you can't lift the head up far enough for that to look good enough um, so you would need a little bit more head articulation there for that to be useful but going forwards pretty much nothing because he's got this extra little bit here uh, but you know left and right is good it's stiff on mine it's sort of ratcheted as you can hear on mine so that's alright but um, yeah hips quite good except quite big thighs so it sort of hinders the articulation forward and back there double knees they're very nice and then feet hindered because just like other war machines in the past that comes down quite far so you can't actually move the feet at all up and down really on mine I don't know about yours but yeah left and right a little bit pivot no nah, not really it's there but you gotta really force it okay so then back up to the gun obviously it can move on that peg uh, so it's got the articulation going up and down like that and then its rotation is there so that's very very good but the more I use it the more it's really loose as you can see mine's really loose I can just swing it round um, I don't know if it like pulls off or anything uh, if you just give it a, a push down it's a little tighter but really not much um, so I don't know how I would tighten that up it doesn't matter too much sitting on the shelf you can just leave it there but yeah that kind of annoys me a little bit um, aside from that things that I don't like about the figure um, there's really not much at all I mean colour wise I really do like it and they haven't just used a white for the eyes in the arc reactor it's more of a kind of nice cream which I do like uh, stars painted really good all of the little logos and the writing and everything is very good um, he has lots of uh, silver patches and everything I think that they really have pulled off a very very nice look with this figure uh, as I said I've only got that one little dot of silver down there which you can barely see and I can probably just scratch it off um, so apart from that I, I do really like this guy actually no there you go look I have another little silver nick there which I've never realized before that little bit there that can probably scratch off uh, yeah that scratches off so I will do that so as a size comparison then next to this guy right here they're 
about the same. He's a little taller. I know he's got him. I got him in a little sort of crouched sort of pose there, but he is a little bit taller as are all the movie figures, um, which is good. Uh, this guy, same wave, um, same design armor. I don't like that for a start, but you know. It's a much more simple thing. It's a suit that we've got in the past and everything, but they've painted the repulsors on him. Look at the amount more detail that's on him, and they haven't even painted the repulsors. So that's just one thing that I really don't like. But in comparison, there are the two I Am Patriots next to each other. This one obviously being Norman Osborn in the comic accurate version. Uh, repainted the Extremis armour in the comics and in real life because this is uh, a repaint of the extremist toy which was wave 15 or something like that um, and then this obviously being just a repainted uh, war machine um, so if you want to see the guy that this is based on Captain America go ahead and subscribe and you'll see the bookie cap uh, review and I will be doing this figure in about the next weekish so if you want to subscribe you'll also see him soon and if you want to see that Captain America video then just click on the link that's been up here through the video or check out my channel and find him so that's all for now I would definitely recommend this figure um, obviously it's the only one that you're going to get from the movie that's uh, this accurate and well painted as this um, definitely some improvements that could be made but they are pretty minor and overall I do really really enjoy this figure apart from the classic Iron Man it's my favorite so far uh, from the line so that's all for this review remember you know check out the video that's up there subscribe wait for this guy and I will see you next time